हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदा दीप आई हॉस्पिटल फेको एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग सेंटर एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डेमोन्स्ट्रेट अ केस ऑफ मैच्योर कैटरैक यू कैन सी इट्स अ वाइट मैच्योर कैटरैक विथ सूडो एक्सपोलिएशन देयर नॉन डायलेटिंग प्यूपिल इट्स अ रिजिड प्यूपिल एंड देर इज शेलो एंटीयर चेम्बर एज यू कैन सी वेन आई इंजेक्ट द डाई द एंटीयर चेम्बर इज क्वेट शेलो सो आई एम गोइंग टू यूज माई फेवरेट हाईल्यू कोट which is a combination of chondroitin and hyaluronate and uh, to make a deeper anterior chamber though it's a shallow anterior chamber it's not a intumescent cataract as you can see from the anterior capsule it's not bulging though there is some fluid cortex there i am going to use the b hex pupil expansion ring and uh, i already shown videos how to insert it and now in such cases where the pupil is little rigid uh you may face difficulties to put the third flange uh so you can do stretch pupilloplasty if you feel if it is too small too rigid but i could get away without it in this case and this ring expands the pupil to around 5.5 mm but most importantly it retains the iris back so during the phaco procedure you do not damage the iris i am going to do the cruciate incision though this is not a intumescent cataract to avoid that fluid cortex hampering during the capsular axis i am going to just aspirate it and how do you know whether it is truly intumescent or not by looking at anterior capsule if it is flat it is not intumescent you can watch my video on the how to detect the intumescence the visco press test you can watch that now here what happened is that there is some fibrous area of the anterior capsule so i shifted to micro capsular axis forceps here and uh, with micro capsular axis forceps i could do the ccc very easily beginners can use iris hooks it will give much better visibility of the anterior capsule so will help in doing the capsular axis now during phaco what i am going to do is uh, do the trench divide first and then do chops and this is a interesting case because uh, the cortex is very fluffy but the inner part is a bit dense so it is important to crack it well now here i could have cracked it completely till the posterior plate but i think i was a bit lazy here if you crack till the posterior plate generally the quadrant removal becomes much easier i am using around uh, 100% ozil linear in burst mode so i'm going to use bursts of 60 to 80 milliseconds and in between there are bursts of longitudinal power of 80 to 90% power and 10 to 20 millisecond burst so for chopping this longitudinal burst help a lot once the chopping is done as you can see i'm going to do the quadrant removal you can see my phaco tip is now sideways or slightly pointing down this helps in easy occlusion and rapid removal of the quadrants some surgeons are afraid that you may aspirate the posterior capsule by keeping the bevel down but if you have right fluidics you need not worry about it of course as you go toward the last piece you can do the bevel up you can reduce the parameters most important in these cases where the shallow anterior chamber is there and cataract is a bit mature it's important to replenish the ovd so i inject the hyaluronic again followed by methyl cellulose in the bag there is some conjunctival ballooning so i will just make a nick in the tenons near the incision to avoid further ballooning of the conjunctiva you can see a bubble there in the hyaluronic just near the endothelium now this will work like a sentinel bubble for me indicating whether the hyaluronic is coating the endothelium is not 
and as I go near the last piece I will shift to the retro elimination mode just to watch the posterior capsule if it is fluctuating I am going to reduce the vacuum and flow rate if required so that you have stable anterior chamber for the last piece so you, you can see that the posterior capsule is very well stable and I don't have to do much here so once you have chopped pieces it is like stand and deliver you just have to keep the phaco tip right at the center and keep delivering power in bursts while your left hand will maneuver the pieces around in these cases cortex removal is important and what is different from immature cataract is that there is no anterior cortical sheet so you actually have to go to the equator of the back so use around 20 vacuum near the equator of the back to catch hold of the cortex there and then pull it in the center as I am doing so using low vacuum in the far periphery of the bag is the key here otherwise you may have some cortical remnants particularly in the equator of the back which you can always dislodge after putting the IOL as well rotate the IOL after you put it in the back two three times so this uh, peripheral cortex get dislodged but it's important to remove it otherwise it will cause little bit of persistent inflammation in the post-operative period and early PCO in such cases uh, so you can retract the B hex around and check for any residual cortex it's better to use a Kuglen hook and just uh, retract this iris all around so be watchful for any retained cortex and just remove it before you put IOL if possible and uh, while injecting the IOL just make sure that the trailing haptic doesn't get engaged in any of the flanges of the B hex otherwise this B hex may get uh, dis entangled from the iris and go under the iris so just be careful about that and that's the end of the procedure you can see that uh, iris is not damaged and uh, anterior chamber is now well formed the aisle is nicely in the bag I'm going to do the thorough visco wash here it's very important in such cases where uh, you have used hylucote which is a viscous or visco dispersive agent and it tends to stick to the endothelium quite a lot so you have to wash it off so you have a very quiet post-operative period I hope you enjoyed the video do subscribe to my youtube channel also visit our facebook page fakotraining.org.in and the website thank you so much